Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Strong boxes, DIY, do it yourself. Let's check it out. I first got to know Dirty Dan at Rick Harker's Border Town movie set. We talked about me needing a strong box for some skits, and he volunteered to make me the rough box. I'm not much of a woodworker, and he has the knowledge and the power tools. <laughs> the requirements were not steep, but there had to be some space in between the boards at the top for this idea I had. You see, a stupid outlaw throws a lit cigar in the strong box and sets all the money on fire. The actor would actually touch off a fuse to a smoke bomb in the box, close the lid, and the smoke would rise from between those spaces in the slats. Yo. <laughs> Yo got a gift, my friend. The strong box is a locked container where valuables are stored. They harken back to the treasure chests we know from the pirate era. Typically, this was kept in a safe place on a stagecoach or wagon under the driver and shotgun messenger in an area called the boot. No, not that boot. Jeez. In 1878, the Vanderman Manufacturing Company was established and made heavy steel chests to be used by railroads and stagecoaches. These steel ones ensured that they would stay solid and safe during travel and give the highwaymen a real headache to break into. Eyewitness accounts tell us that the robbers had a number of ways that they could break into these, from skeleton keys to shooting the lock off. The latter might be difficult if the lock was built into the box. Padlocks, of course, are what we are all accustomed to seeing in westerns. Size was not standard across the board, though. I found some examples that were small and others sizable. The Wells Fargo models measured about two feet long by one foot wide and one foot deep, which, incidentally, is the size of the box that Dirty Dan made. Repurposing some old planks, Dan made the rough box. I then did the finish work. I purchased some chalk paint, which would add that matte early American look, and then added a coat of wax paint, which darkens the base coat and settles into the cracks and crevices. This combo together gives the look of dingy, worn wood. Old hinges, handles, and the latch were purchased at various hardware stores, and I painted some of them black. The metal straps were actually shelf brackets from Home Depot that I attached to the box. These had to be really sturdy, and those shelf brackets are thick and do the job. As for the strapping around the lid, that was the hardest. I bought thinner sheet metal, cut it, then screwed it into the wood. No, I didn't use proper flathead screws. I used Phillips head because these had to look like rivets. Ace Hardware provided me these Phillips screw head covers that I glued on to finish that appearance. After that, I touched up the metal with some rust looking paint, added a chain on the inside, then a hardy reproduction lock. However, I did not want this to be a Wells Fargo strong box. Those are everywhere and, well... That's exactly what they'll be expecting us to do. With the stencil, I made up a company from a real Old West town in Arizona. Yeah, I like the name too. Gotta go check that ghost town out one day. Darn it. On the bucket list. So, there you have it. A prop strong box that cost me less than $2,769. Well, the box only cost me 50 bucks, but being friends with Dirty Dan racks oh. up a lot of medical bills. If you decide to make one yourself, I say that the sky's the limit. Have fun with it and use it well. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail.